How's it going, Ding Dongs? Welcome back to Ding Dong Drift. If you've been following a while, you'll remember that this car has never had a working fuel gauge. Not when it had a stock cluster, not when it had my OBD1 stock ECU cluster, and not even now with the full digital standalone ECU everything and fuel cell, obviously. Yesterday, actually, I was coming home from dropping off packages to you guys, and my car died one street from my house because I was um, I was on a downhill so all the remaining fuel was away from the pickup because my pickup is in the back because you know drifting usually my fuel should be in the back of the or of the fuel cell so all the fuel sloshed to the front because I only had a little bit left luckily I was able to roll the car to a flat spot get some fuel to the pickup and able to drive home but I had no idea I was out of gas so today I'm gonna fix that. So if you don't know, I have an aluminum fuel cell in the car. That is the sender, and it is a linear sender. Most senders have like a little arm that goes up and down like this, and there's a little float, so full tank, you know, and then there's a little potentiometer, and that tells the gauge how much fuel there is. Well, in my fuel cell, I wanted to put a bunch of this anti-slosh foam so the fuel wouldn't slosh around inside the tank. I couldn't run one of the little flippy things because it takes up a lot of room. So I got a linear fuel cell. So it's just a float on a tube that goes up and down like this, it takes up a lot less room. So if you can see, I'm already taking off all my lines. Feeds right here, return is right there, and the breather is right there. Cause I'm gonna pull the whole fuel cell out. It'll just make things a lot easier. still feels very heavy. Yeah, I think I know why it's so heavy. Usually I take the frame off and then pull the fuel cell out. It's kind of stuck right now, and I don't know why. Here's all the foam. I think there's too much of it. Yep, it's pressed up against the fuel, the sender. Okay, so now without this piece, it shouldn't touch it. So I'm gonna try to put this one back in. Okay, so that is not touching. Can you see that? We got 95 ohms. So if I move this up, it should go down. So there we go. All right, so inside the car now, here's my ugly wiring for my PDM. Ignore that, I'm gonna redo that in the winter. It's just then I've been adding stuff and adding stuff and adding stuff that I haven't had the time to really organize all the wiring, but I promise this winter I'm gonna fix it. So because I have not used any sensors on the PDM yet, I have not wired in the five volt output, which is what you use for sensors. Got some light in here. This wire is gonna be the input so I'm gonna put that in input A2 because it is right next to the five volt source. So I'll make it nice and easy. That's the five volt output and that's the input A2, pins 15 and 16. All right, so I think I got it all wired up. You can see here's the main harness that goes to the back of the car. Goes all the way here. It's kind of dangling right now, but goes all the way to the back. And then and if we come over here, See, it comes here. I had to extend it a little bit. And then here is the plug for the sender. So if I just put this to the ground up there, I just gotta do that. And I capped off the two screws for the low and high lights. I don't need that. And then you can see I made the plugs different so you can't plug in the wrong plug. Although you could plug it into each other, but you'd be an idiot if you did that. All right, so I have it hooked up. However, I'm in the trunk and the laptop is in the front seat. So I'm gonna move the float and uh, you guys gotta tell me if value is changing. So uh, let me know. Is it changing right now? So now it's at the lowest, now it's at the highest. So you guys probably saw the voltage changes about five hundredths of a volt, which is very little resolution to determine the amount of fuel in the tank. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm so late. Been at this for like three days. All right, I'm gonna go inside, do some more research, 
and we'll see if I can figure something out because man, this sucks. All right, well, as always, I'm an idiot and I wired it wrong. So when I was testing, the five volts was going into the sensor like this and then I was adding the resistor after that. But what you need to do is go from five volt to the resistor, then to the signal wire. So I had that backwards and nothing I was doing was working. So after looking at this for hours, I finally figured it out. So now I have to cut this wire because this has a terminal on it. So I have to cut this. I have to join these two together and then I have to put a 36 ohm resistor on here going to the five volts. And then in the software, I have it set up as a 10K pull-up, I think. It doesn't really matter because the five volts is now overriding the internal pull-up of the PDM. So it doesn't matter anymore. I think it's a pull-down actually. Once everything is fully wired up, I got everything back together. We will test the range fully. This whole debacle will be done and I can move on to f f making it show up on the dash. All right, I got the whole CAN bus set up working. So let me show you how I set it all up. Maybe this will be helpful for you. So first we're gonna start on the actual sensor. Because it's not linear, I don't know if I mentioned this already, halfway through the voltage drops off very, like from here to here is not the same as from here to here. So I had to define that as a calibrated sensor see that instead of a linear sensor so all I did was held the float at 50% and looked at what the voltage was and this is this should be enough so once you got that all done then we're going to add a new CAN bus export we're gonna come into here and you want to define your ID hex however ECU master uses hexadecimal which is numbers and letters whereas real dash uses just decimal, so just numbers. So we have to do a little conversion. Binaryhexconverter.com, you can type in decimal value, which is the one we need. So the base ID is a thousand, and then every frame is, you know, zero, one, so that's a thousand, thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. For some reason it skipped four, five, six, seven. So the last one is seven. So put that in and we get three EF here. And you see we got zero three EF. Go to this, click the fuel level or whatever value you're putting in and it does not need any sort of conversion or multiplication or anything. So just using one on there, standard length. Um, and I only want it to go once a second. I don't want it to be like sending a bunch of data all the time because the value does fluctuate quite a bit. So that's basically done on the ECU uh, or PDM side of things. Then we go into our XML file. So this is the file that the real dash actually uses to interpret what it needs to do with the can data because if you look if we go in the garage and we look at the can monitor that's the can data that is actually coming in so it has to take this can data which is just random mumbo jumbo it's weird because the can monitor you see it's hexadecimal with letters and everything. There's our three EF. The XML file is not. The XML file is decimal. I don't know what's going on, but it does make it a little bit confusing. So if we go to our last frame, number seven. I usually just take these and I just copy paste them and change the value. So we got fuel level, uh, zero offset because it's the first thing in the frame. And the length is two. This took me a while to figure out. For some reason, I, ha um, I had this as three because I thought three numbers zero to 100, 100 is three numbers, so I put in three. Turns out you don't need to do that. I don't know why I did it, but it's not necessary. Leave it as two. When I had it at three, it was showing the full voltage. So it was showing me 3,300, whatever it is right now, as a yeah full number without any decimals or anything. So I changed it to two and now it's fine. So then we just input the CAN file on um, our tablet go back. I just took my throttle gauge, duplicated it, and then I changed the value. We go to the number, input and values, and ECU specific, and there it is, fuel level. That should appear when you do the CAN bus stuff correctly. And then just define it from zero to 100. And then we go to look and feel, go to special, and I did it 99% value smoothing, so that if you don't, I go down a hill or whatever, and the fuel sloshes around, it doesn't just like say zero fuel. So I don't want the value to be changing a bunch. So it's smoothed out right now. And um, yeah, that's basically it. CAN bus can be very frustrating, especially when you have little things like that, like that length value. I had it set to three and it was just not working. So I was trying to, I literally spent like an hour sitting here 
trying to figure out why why he kept saying the wrong value. When you're doing CAN bus, make sure you look through everything, make sure stuff matches compared to your other values. Now that the fuel gauge is working, I need to make a better funnel because putting gas in this car sucks. So because the fuel cell sits so far back, I can't fit a fuel, whatever, filler thingy all the way back here. I mean, I can kind of stick the nozzle in there, but I can't get it deep enough so what happens is, you can see it's scratched up there because I've been sticking the freaking nozzle in there. It just overflows because the, the fuel comes out so quickly on those things. So what I've been using is this abomination. Freaking sucks because it always overflows. And I have no idea how much gas I'm actually putting in. So I need to make something else. So let's 3D print it because I just 3D print everything. This is 3D printed. And this will eventually become the fuel filler. That's going to be later on because I'm, I'm this whole rear end is just going to change. But this will eventually become the fuel filler. So this is just a temporary fix funnel so that I can pour gas in it easily. 30 centimeters should be good, I think. Or sorry, three centimeters. And then we got about a 15 centimeters of... Seven percent still. Okay, let's keep going. Whoops. Went a little too fast there. That's not good. Is it actually full? Oh, it is full. And why does the gauge say 87%? Why does it? Oh, you know what? We're on a hill. Well, that sucks. Well, it worked for a little bit and then it didn't work. So as you guys saw, the gigantic filler funnel works great until I overfilled the tank. It is full, the tank is full, but for some reason the gauge is reading 90%. Last time I filled it up, it was reading 99%. So hopefully I'm, I'm hoping the foam didn't expand so much that it trapped it again. Uh, so I made some modifications to the funnel. You see I added a little leg because it was falling over. And I added these little loops on it to try and hold it in the trunk somewhere. I had it like, like this with some Velcro straps. But with Velcro straps, it's annoying because they have to wrap around. Because I don't have the like double-sided Velcro straps. I just have the ones where it's like the hooks are on one end and the loops are on the other end. I'll figure out some sort of way to hold this in the trunk because I really don't want to have it inside the car because it stinks. In case you're wondering, the plastic is holding up 
just fine. PTG is not rated for, you know, solvents or gasoline or whatever, but I'm just pouring it on. It's not soaking in fuel, so it doesn't really matter. So that's gonna wrap up this quick little video, Ding Dongs. I know it was random, but I'm really excited to have a working fuel gauge finally. Like I said in the beginning, has never had a working fuel gauge. And I was always just guessing. I had no idea if I had fuel or not. It was always just keep adding more until can't add anymore. And uh, that was getting annoying. All right, thank you so much for watching Ding Dongs. Peace out, stay sweet, and I'll see you guys next week. Do you have your passport? Did you get your job?